Uh, I'm Paul Harris. This is the Big 550 KTRS. I, I'm several years away from signing up for Social Security, fortunately. But a friend of mine recently gave me a book that was um, one of those books that I started reading and I thought, oh, Social Security, this is going to be boring. And then in the first few pages where I saw that I'm probably going to be missing out on tens of thousands of dollars in my own Social Security benefits if I don't make the right choices, it definitely got my attention. And I've read this book and now I'm recommending it to other people, so much so that I've invited one of the co-authors to join me. His name is Lawrence Kotlikoff. He wrote the book with Philip Moeller and Paul Solomon. The book is called Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. Lawrence Kotlikoff, welcome to KTRS. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so so happy you uh, like the book. Yeah, uh, well, tens of thousands of dollars. I think most Americans have no idea that this is the case. Yes, absolutely. The uh, system is so complicated that nobody really understands uh, what to do. It's uh, a bureaucrat's uh, you know, fantasy to make so many rules that uh, nobody can follow except them. And most, is, uh, and most, yeah, people, most people believe that when they get to 62 years old, okay, well, now I've officially qualified for Social Security, and I've been putting money away since I started working as a teenager. I want to start getting some of that money back. You say in the book that's the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah, if you take your benefits too soon, you're going to be giving up a whole lot of uh, value because... Social Security is not just uh, kind of an investment or saving vehicle where you put money in and then you get it back independent of what happens to you. Instead, you get it back if you continue to live for as long as you live. If you live to 190, every year they're going to keep paying you benefits. So it's an insurance against uh, excessive longevity program. That's really what it is. It's an insurance system. It's really an insurance company. And just like when we buy homeowner's insurance, we look at the worst-case scenario. Here, the worst-case scenario is living to 100, living to our maximum, not to our expected age of life, because we can't count on dying on time. We have to worry about living to our maximum age of life. And that's where Social Security's greatest value is in terms of... uh, So if you wait till 70 to collect your retirement benefit, it's going to be 76% higher than if you started at 62. So that's, there's a huge payoff from patients. There's also a huge payoff from understanding all the benefits to which you're eligible. There are about 12 different benefits. Uh, you may be eligible for three, three of those 12 or four uh, through time or even five. So you have to know what's available to you. And then the, the third kind of important rule beyond patients and knowing all the benefits is you need to understand how to collect those benefits in a, in a timely manner in the sense of timing your collection so that one benefit doesn't wipe out the other. You can't get two benefits at once, but you can get two benefits over time if you take one first and let the other grow. So the Social Security, uh, the way to maximize your Social Security is to be strategic with respect to the timing uh, and also be patient where it pays and uh, also know everything that you're eligible for. So I just want to go back to this notion of not taking it at 62 when you first become eligible. That's when you would get the lowest possible earnings because they kind of hold back until you get to 67 or 70 for you to get, well, at 70 you said it's 76% more in your monthly check than it would be at 62. But then a lot of people would say, well, what if I don't live a long time? How long do you have to live past 70 to make that I didn't take it at 62 decision correct? So I want to move us away, and we, we're trying to move people away from that kind of question and that kind of thinking because uh, you could, when it comes to homeowners insurance, you could say, well, I don't need to buy homeowners insurance because um, most likely my house won't, won't burn down. Yeah. Here, it's, uh, I may not live that long, so I better take my benefits now. That's like, I'm not going to buy this longevity insurance, this insurance of living against 100 because uh, most likely my house won't burn down. I won't live to 100. Yep. But we have to deal with that worst-case scenario. We can't count on dying on time. If we do die early, suppose you come to 62, and the guys at Social Security are telling you, take your benefits now because if you die, you'll lose them. You won't get them. Well, how, uh, think about that. If you die at 62, having or 63 or 5, or, or even at 69 or 70, having never taken your benefits yet, you're dead. And where are you when you're dead? You're in heaven. You don't need money. 
the real risk of life is not dying. The real risk of life is living hmm. to 100 and living and running out of money. So we're completely trying to change the mind frame. That the Social Security system has been dominated by actuaries. These are people that are uh, good with numbers, but they don't have the personality to be accountants, and they don't seem to understand any economics. They've had no economics training, certainly about the economics of insurance. Not value of homeowners and policy on a break-even basis. You wouldn't say, well, I'm not going to buy that policy because I won't break even on the investment. It's not an investment. What you do is you buy, you make sure that you buy that policy, even if your chance of your house burning to the ground is very small, smaller than average, you still buy it to have yourself protected because you only have one house to burn down or to lose uh, or not lose. Yep. And here you only have one life that may make it to 100 or not. Yeah. You can't play, you cannot play the odds because you don't have, you only got one one life in this game. Yeah. You don't have a million. And You're that, not an insurance company. And that's the mistake that costs a lot of people tens of thousands of dollars, but there are all these others that you uh, outline in the book. And I'm curious, if I were to go to a Social Security office or call somebody who works at a Social Security office and ask them, would they know what you know and you have in the book? No, there about 40% of the responses from Social Security either when you go there in person or over the phone are either out, outright wrong where they say you cannot collect this benefit when you actually can. You can't suspend your benefit when you actually can and, and start it up again later at a higher value. You can't do X, Y, and Z when you absolutely can. They, they don't know the rules. There are many cases very adamant about, uh, about saying things that are just absolutely not true. And then in addition, they give you incomplete or just incorrect information about what you can do. They don't know anything about your family, about whether you've got whether you're married, whether you're uh, widowed, whether you were married for ten years and uh, to three you know three different spouses, and you can collect on each of them. They don't have this connection in their records between uh, the, your own personal earnings history and other earnings histories on which you can collect benefits or on which other people can collect benefits off of your records. So they're not in a position really to give you any advice whatsoever. You do not want to ask them any questions. You want to tell them what to do. Okay. You want to go in there knowing what, what that's where the book comes in. And we also have my software company, uh, a little software company on the side called MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com, MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. For 40 bucks, the book plus the 40 bucks on the software can really make sure that everybody gets it right. Now, I, I want to give our listeners one specific example of something they can do, and it's the example that you gave to your co-author, Paul Solomon, about spousal benefits and taking them and suspending them. Would you share those with us now? Yeah, if you're, uh, in, in Paul's case, if you're married, uh, one of the two spouses can get a basically a spouse benefit for free or full spouse benefit, and this sounds like we're kind of uh, cashing in on Social Security, but... In fact, we pay for these benefits by paying 12.4% of our pay every year in payroll taxes. So the trick in Paul's case uh, was for his wife to file for her retirement benefit and suspend its collection. That enabled him, that permitted him to file at re full retirement age, not before, but at full retirement age, had to wait till then, to file just for a spousal benefit. So then he was able to collect just the spousal benefit, which is half of her benefit. That totaled 50000 bucks over four years. And then at 70, he took his own retirement benefit. So there, there's an example of taking one benefit early, in this case his spousal benefit, from off his wife's record, and letting his other benefit grow because his, as he waited until 70, his, benefit, his own retirement benefit kept growing 8% a year. It's not compounded, but that's four years times 8% is 32% higher than had he taken his retirement benefit at, 62, at, at, at 66 at full retirement age. So that's an example of call, what's called file and suspend, where the other, that allows the other spouse to collect his spousal benefit. But there's other um, you know, cases where people, I have a friend who I uh, got $120,000 for in about space of about a two minutes conversation because he knew nothing about widower benefits and how to collect those properly. Or child benefits, I got another friend uh, 15000 bucks just the other night because he knew nothing about them. So there are tw about 12 different benefits, most of which people don't know about, and then you have to figure out the right way to, to get around Social Security's gotchas. They've got all kinds of minefields set up so that some people, you know, get what they paid for and others don't just because they know the rules. 
This is a perfect example of where Americans' financial education comes up so short, but also information that we should have because, after all, it is our money that isn't shared with us, even by the authorities who answer the phones at the Social Security offices or probably the people who actually made these laws in the first place. That's why I'm strongly recommending you get this book. It's called Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security by Lawrence Kotlikoff, Philip Mahler, and Paul Solomon. Uh, Lawrence Kotlikoff in his real-life job is a professor of economics at Boston University and also runs that website, MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. Really valuable information that could get you tens of thousands of dollars you did not know how to get before. Larry, I appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for joining me. Anytime. My pleasure. I'm Paul Harris. This is the Big 550 KTRS. Hi, this is Jeff